him asked me to get into the publishing process here. All right. So back to Julie's point. Did you know that UB stores their posters on the Faculty Research Day website? Um, we also have UB ScholarWorks now. Um, it's great to get ideas. It's great to look at that to help your students get ideas as well. I just wanted to highlight this for you, right? We are tracking this stuff. We are keeping this stuff. It's available uh, as a historical record and something that we can tap into as a knowledge base, okay? And so check those links out. I'm not going to pull them up right here, okay? Now, there are several publishing options. We have Faculty Research Day, as we've mentioned. We have conferences. We have journals. We have monographs, we have books. Now you'll notice that three of them are have a blue highlight around them. Those are the three we're gonna discuss. A monograph is like somewhere in the middle between an, a, an article and a conference proceeding, eh. And then there's a, the books are kind of a longer tale. You certainly can put research into books, obviously, but they, they might not have, that takes a while to do. So let's just talk to faculty research day conferences and journals. So faculty research day, just wanna remind everybody, I think you've heard it plenty. A, pub, a poster is a published work. A poster is a published work. Okay, third time. The poster is a published work. So students and faculty need to follow the IRB guidelines. I know a lot of us take pride in being faculty research day advisors. I've done it. Um, but if you're proud of that, well, then part of your pride has to be, did you go through the IRB when it's appropriate? Okay, next. Conferences. So um, conferences provide a really, again, some of you guys probably know this, but I just want to remind you because it's all the big picture, you know, it's not as rigorous as journals. Most of the time, the publications there are not finished, but you could try your work out and you could get credit for it, right? I have links to two examples here. The first one is the Northeast Decision Sciences Institute Conference. Now the DSI is all over the country. The International Association for Computer Information Systems or IACIS. I love that one. Here's the deal. When you publish for conferences, you'll be published in the conference proceedings or the conference journal. For instance, that um, IACIS, you get published in their um, journal issues and information systems just by going. Obviously, that's not a, uh, a high impact factor, which we'll get into, but hey, it's a, it's a nice thing. All right, journals. Oh my God, if I was in class, I'd say drum roll, please. And so Tim was saying, hey, Mike, what's the process to get published in a journal? First of all, you got to find an appropriate journal. Uh, I may be able to help you with that, but I'm not going to do your work for you. I mean, you got you to gotta go find a good journal. You know, I'm sure in your own areas, you know what they are. We got to understand the publication guidelines. And in a few minutes, I'm going to share a screen on a journal I'm, in, I'm on the editorial board for, just to give you a feel for like wh what you'd be looking at with publication guidelines. You write, format, and submit your article per the guidelines. And the guidelines can be a real pain. I've had, I've had faculty I've published with. I can't believe I have to format it with those margins and I got to do this. And, I and the answer is, yeah. Yes. So you want to follow the guidelines or you won't get accepted, okay? Um, you wait for peer evaluation feedback. You apply the recommended changes and then you resubmit. Note what I just said. You're not going to be done the first time through. There's going to be a good journal will have a peer evaluation and you're going to have to take that feedback in, adjust your paper and resubmit. And then you hope for, let's do a little can-do attitude here. You expect acceptance. And again, when you're doing a journal article, you really do need to follow the IRB again. Now, I do want to mention, Ali and I were talking about this. In fact, uh, it's funny because I, I had this in mind prior to his and my discussion at graduation. We were talking about publishing. And we mentioned how long it is between responses. You can expect a really long lead time for when you submit to a journal and when you get a response, up to a year, up to a half a year sometimes. It depends on how, what their pipeline looks like, et cetera. But I've seen it. One time I published with um, Nikki Wingate. It was literally a year uh, for the whole process to go through, okay? That's the negative of a journal, right? Because people say journals are a little stale. Well, that's the reason why. Okay. One of the reasons. All right. So now I want to get into, you guys have heard about the impact factor. So from the Taylor and Francis website, the definition of an impact factor, it's the average number of citations received by journals, articles in a journal within a two-year window. So earlier, Tim talked about the A, B, and C journals. Generally speaking, the higher the impact factor, the closer it is to an A journal. Okay. The lower the impact factor or no impact factor, it's going to be a C journal. For, and everything in between. So for example, if you look at this right here for 20, 2019 impact factors that are released in 2020, the calculation was the number of citations received in 19, okay, 
for content published in 17 and 18 divided by the total number of articles and reviews published in the journal in 27 and 2018. So the Jour Journal of Computer Information Systems, it's a nice journal. It's got a 3.4 impact factor. It's reasonably um, potent. So journal metrics. So you go down to journal metrics, you see the impact factors right here. Okay, um, submit. This is what Tim was really asking me to focus on quite a bit. So there's a submission site here, but you'll always see instructions for authors, right? And the editorial policies. I am not going through this in detail, but you definitely would step through all this stuff, writing guidelines, style guidelines. That's with the whole margin thing, et cetera. And this is a pretty potent journal. Sometimes really good, uh, really good uh, journals just don't have impact factors. You know, I hope Ali, I hope you don't mind me mentioning this, but Ali had mentioned that he had submitted to a what looks like a good analytics journal and one that our buddy, the same Phil Myman, submitted to. I mean, he's bona fide. We all remember him. But it doesn't really, it has kind of a low impact factor because it's just getting off the ground. I don't want us to not pursue journals like that. And I really hope when we define this, and I, I'm sure somebody will ask me my input, let's define that a little broadly. You know, not everybody is really, um, enthused to go after even the 3.4 uh, impact. I'd be very comfortable with it, but I've been publishing that for publishing for a while. So here's one. It's called Issues and Information Systems. I've already alluded to it. Even that has publication guidelines. Where it's a nice entry level journal, but there's no impact factor. Yeah. But look at you still have all the submit. Here's all the old ones. You can find my work out here. I A C I S. Um, but what you can do is go in and let me see publication instructions for authors. And there's your publication authors, first submission, formatting instructions, all that kind of thing. When you publish, that's how you go about it. First, you find your article, then you find, then you just submit. And it presumes that you've already done your research. 